Take a comfortable seat on your mat and close your eyes. Slow, deep inhale through the nose. Cleansing exhale through the mouth. Again. When you're ready, we're going to inhale both arms up. Bring the palms together. Exhale the hands home to your heart, Nanjali Mudra. Pausing to set an intention for your practice. When you're ready, just release your hands to rest on your knees. Sitting up tall, keeping the eyes closed. And beginning to follow the breath. If you get used to following the breath or observing it, it has things to tell you. And so my question this morning is, do you pay attention to hear what the breath is saying or do you ignore it? And if the breath right now had a mantra that it was relaying to you, what would it be? What do you hear? On your next inhale, let's take the arms all the way up. Bring the palms together. Exhale to the crown chakra, top of the head. Hold right here, close your eyes. And let's imagine that you're channeling energy from the crown of the head into the hands, fingertips. Deepen the breath. Inhale, exhale to the third eye chakra, right at the eyebrows. Channeling energy between that chakra and the hands. Inhale. As you exhale, we're gonna separate the hands and just take them around the neck to channel the throat chakra. Inhale, exhale, letting the hands rest across the heart chakra. Ready, take a deep breath in. Exhale, take the hands to rest on the solar plexus, so above the navel, kind of where the ribs start. All 
consciously breathing into the hands so you can feel the abdomen pushing against your palms and your fingertips. Inhale. As you exhale, slide the hands down right below the navel. Sacral chakra. And this might be a little harder, but see if you can breathe from the sacral into the hands without bringing the breath up into the solar plexus where you just had it. And then we're gonna, I don't know how you're seated, but if you're seated like I am, separate the feet a little bit, hands to the soles of the feet, tapping into the root chakra, which is the span of the light, Le <clears throat> excuse me, legs. When you're ready, go ahead and use your hands to bring the soles of the feet together. So we'll be seated in cobbler for a moment. If you need your blocks under your, your knees or thighs, you can grab them. We're going to inhale the arms up. And again, if this throws you off balance, then take the feet a little bit further out. Okay. Inhale the arms up. Now turn to the left and exhale, open the arms wide. So it's as though we're just we're inviting in all the energy around us. So stay turned to the left. Inhale, arms back up. Now turn to center, exhale to the heart. Drop the arms, inhale them up. Turn to face that right knee, exhale the arms down. Inhale, scoop up all that energy as you still face to the right. Come back to center, exhale, hands to the heart. Drop the hands. Inhale all the way up. Turn the palms outward. Exhale down through all that energy around you. And then here's where, you know, I talked about what signals do the, does the breath have for you? What is the energy around you telling you? So go ahead and move your arms through your space as you see fit. And where do you want to go? Where do you feel like you want to grab energy? And in other places, does it feel stifled? Does it need your attention? And maybe you fluff that space up. So just play here for a moment. Maybe you need to mix up the energy. When you feel like you're done, just settle in stillness. Deep breath in, big exhale. All right, let's flip on over into table. I don't know about you, but I need to move this morning. So consciously grounding through the hands, spreading the fingers wide. When you're ready, holding table, neutral neck. So looking down at the mat, I want you to give me three deep breaths.
When you're ready, we're gonna inhale, cow. Sag the belly, lift the chin. Exhale, round it into cat. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. Back to table, neutral spine. I want you to send the right foot out behind you. Tuck the toes on the mat. Get your weight in that foot. And then add the left. You're in plank. Don't hold the breath. Right knee down. Left knee down. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. Come back to a neutral spine. If full plank is too much, you're just going to stay with the right leg and then the next time we do it you do the left leg all right so here we go right leg back option to stay right there option to add the second leg breathe right knee to the earth left knee to the earth inhale cow exhale cat come back to table left leg out behind you. So if you chose the one-legged option on the other side, stay right here or add that right leg, breathe. Left knee down, right knee down. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. Inhale, cow, tuck the toes. Downward facing dog. Walk it out. When you're ready, push the hips back and up just a little bit more. Deep breath in. Loud exhale. Lift the heels, release the knees back down to the mat. Walk the hands forward for modified plank. Inhale, exhale, chaturanga. Ah, Bhujangasana, cobra, whatever height you want to come up to. Breathe, we're gonna hold cobra. Pull the ears back wherever you're at. Big inhale. Exhale, drift back down. Push all the way back into child's pose, Balasana. Listening to your own breath, what is it saying here? Is it saying, well, I wasn't ready for moving yet. <laughs> yet here we are, slow the breath down. Is it saying, that felt great, do it again. I don't know, just listen, what is it telling you? And again, where does it feel stuck so we know which areas of the body seem a little tight? All right, you ready? Let's rise on up into table. Inhale, cow, when you're ready. Exhale, cat. Back to table. Send the right leg out behind you. If you choose to stay on one leg, pause right here, or add the left leg. Don't hold your breath here. Right knee down, left knee down, inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. Neutral spine. Left leg out behind you and or right leg out behind you. Right knee in, left knee in. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. 
Inhale, cow, tuck the toes. Downward facing dog. Adho walk it out. Deepen the breath. Lift the heels. Release the knees to the earth. Hands move forward a bit for modified plank. Inhale. Exhale, chaturanga, elbows going straight back by the ribs. Inhale, right up into cobra, bhujangasana, hold it wherever you're at. Pull the ears back and breathe. Remember, we're not locking the elbows in this position. Shoulders are not holding up the neck. Inhale. Exhale, drift on down, and when you're ready, you're going to push all the way back into child's pose. Job. Rise up into table. Replant the alignment. Wrists are below the shoulders, knees below the hips. Tuck the toes. Downward facing dog. Wiggle the feet a little closer to each other. Hips are still pushing up and back. You can bend the knees if you need to. We're going to lift that right leg out behind us. So a one-legged dog. Do not open up the right hip. So you don't have to lift it far, but make sure the toes are facing down at the earth. And then let's go ahead and step that right foot forward between the hands, grabbing blocks if they're around and you want them. I'm gonna give you an option here. You can leave that back leg lifted or set it down. Completely up to you. Either way, let's try to elevate the heart. Breathe. All right, you ready? We're going to take that right foot all the way back to dog. So take it slowly. That foot can bunny hop if you need it to. Walk it out, soften the breath. When you're ready, shift the weight into the right foot. Let's lift that left leg out behind us, one-legged dog. Hips are level. And stepping that left foot forward between the hands. Again, you decide what you're doing with that back leg. Hang in there, restorative pose next. One more breaths. Let's step that left foot back, downward facing dog. Give me a deep inhale when you get there. Loud exhale. Lift the heels. Return the knees to the mat. Ah, widen out the knees and come back down into Balasana. This time, grab any props if you want them. When you're comfortable, close your eyes.
So I want you to imagine, this won't sound very peaceful, but it, it's, you know, going along with this theme I've planned in my head for you. I want you to imagine that you're driving on the highway. And if you need it to be more peaceful than that, you can be the only car on the highway. How about that? And you're starting to get hungry. And you don't feel like McDonald's or Wendy's. So you're kind of keeping an eye out for something, I don't know, let's say Subway. Something that's a little more elevated than, uh, than the other two. And we know that as we're driving, that we're going to see these food signs along the highway and the sign's gonna be blue, right? We're used to that. So blue means there's something to get off for, right? There's food or there's gas or maybe there's something else. And so we see up ahead, there's a blue sign and as we get closer, we're looking at all the little boxes, icons, I guess, if you will, on that sign that, no, it's not really a billboard. And there might be multiple pictures, right? Showing you what's to get off at. And have you noticed that by the time your eyes have scanned all of the boxes, oh, there's McDonald's, there's Wendy's, oh, there is a subway, you're past the sign and you realize, I didn't see what exit that was at. Pretty good odds it's the exit immediately following but not necessarily and so maybe you get off at the next exit hoping that you'll see the subway but you realize doggone it that sign was talking about a different exit so you just loop around and you you get back on the highway and so where my head was uh, going with this is sometimes we know what signs to look for. We think we know what signs to look for, or we've been raised to look for a certain sign, right? So in this country, we generally know that a blue sign is going to be for food or gas or something along those lines. So in looking for the blue sign, Sometimes we miss the other signs along the way. So what if I'm looking for Subway and I never saw a blue sign, but yet Subway thought they would get clever and they put up a billboard, but I missed the billboard completely. Yes, it's a lot larger, but I wasn't looking at the billboards. I was looking for the blue signs, right? So I've missed a sign along the way because it didn't come in the form that I was expecting. Give me a deep breath. Let it go. Stay as you are or walk your hands and or your props to the right and twisted child's pose. So let's say we did get off at the next exit and apparently it wasn't correct. Um, we have some options here. We can, as I said, get back, circle back on and get on the highway again and continue and just consider that a little bump in the road, if you will. Or we can get curious and we could start driving around this area to see what else might be there. We could pull over and we could use our GPS to see if there's a subway in the area. So we have some options. And some of those options might take up more of our time than others, quicker to get back on the highway and just head to the next exit. But if we decide, eh, I'm here, let me look around, that might take us a little bit longer, right? And so that's going to directly affect the timing, my ETA, I thought, that I was going to hit when I got home. So again, another expectation that might be put off by another bump in the road. But what is your reaction to that? Well, if we're starving and, you know, we were really, really attached to finding Subway, we might be ticked off. We might, we might only allow that to be, I, I don't know why I can't speak English correctly today. We might allow that to be our only option so I'm gonna continue on until I find a darn subway. 
or I am so hungry, now I don't even care. Whatever the GPS tells me is within a mile, I'm there, right? Go ahead and take child's pose to the other side. I want you to go back to thinking about that first blue sign we passed where you saw the different pictures of what the exit's going to hold. And I want you to <clears throat> become comfortable with this idea that even though we found our answer as we expected it to be on a blue sign, we missed the exit, we missed seeing the exit because we were looking at other aspects of that sign. And so even though we get a sign, I put that in air quotes, in the way we're expecting, we still don't necessarily glean all of the information that's there. So now we sit with what everyone loves to sit with, which is uncertainty. Take a deep breath in. Bring the hands back to center. When you're ready, let's come on back up into table. So I'm gonna take my left hand, I'm gonna slide it a little bit more towards center underneath me. Draw that stomach in a bit. Take the right arm. Let's go ahead and just pull the right elbow up toward the shoulder. You stop when your shoulder says to. If you can get that arm all the way up, fine. I know I've gone off camera, but make sure the palm is facing to the right in the direction you're looking. Breathe. Big inhale. As you exhale, let's go ahead and just gently sweep the right arm underneath. I'm not coming all the way down. I'm gonna come maybe halfway down and then push myself right back up. You got it. Exhale, coming down. Inhale, take it back up. Last one. And then we'll release the right hand back to the earth. I'm gonna realign my left wrist right under the shoulder and then let the right hand move to center. Go ahead and start to pull that left elbow up. See where the body wants to go here. Inhale, exhale, sweep that left arm underneath, come halfway down, inhale back up. Give me two more. When you're ready, you'll come back to table. Cross one foot over the other and go ahead and sit back. We'll get those feet out from underneath of us. Ah, knees bent when you're ready. I have my feet hip about hip distance apart. I'm gonna sit up tall here. Just close your eyes for a moment. So if you remember in my little story there, I completely missed the billboard. It's pretty darn big. So it begs the question of what other signs and help are we missing every day? Because we're, we're just not looking for them, right? Isn't it true that if I wasn't hungry at all, I might not have even noticed the blue sign in the first place, because I, I didn't need it. I didn't think I needed it. So what signs are we missing? Are 
All right, let's take the hands behind us, fingers facing in. Go ahead, lean back into the elbows. I'm going to get that right ankle up on top of the left thigh. Watch out that we're not rounding out the spine here. Okay, go ahead and start wiggling that left foot in. It's gonna look different for each of us. You can also push into the hands to sit up taller. You're looking for that uh, pigeon stretch in the right glute. So right foot's flexed, I'm pushing my knee away from me. And then just close your eyes and breathe. up your eyes. I'm going to take the left foot. I'm going to wiggle it over towards my right hip so that I can set my legs down into double pigeon, which is knee above ankle, ankle above knee. And if you need a prop between that top knee and bottom foot, then you should put one there. All right, sit up tall. Close your eyes again. Let's make this option A. Option B, we're gonna lengthen a little bit more and just start to lean forward into our hands a couple inches. You're deciding, you're listening to the body, you're listening to the breath, you're taking in all the signs to see if the body is willing to go further, if it wants to, if it's able. You, of course, can drop your hands down for more support. I'm just going to float back up. Sit back a little so you can get the feet out, setting them back down on the mat, using your hands behind you for support. Left ankle on the right thigh, push the knee away, flex that foot, and then begin to wiggle that right foot in or push into your hands to get closer to the leg. Ah, close your eyes when you're ready. Open your eyes and begin to wiggle that right foot over toward the left so we can set the legs down again in a double pigeon. Use a prop under the left knee if you need to and close your eyes. On your next exhale, if you want to add a fold, go ahead.
and then waiting for an exhale to push your way back up. All right, let's untangle those legs, stretch them out for a moment. Ah. All right, let's grab our bolster. I'm gonna take that behind me, running vertically up my mat, and then scooch back so we can uh, slowly lower down on that bolster. Oh yeah, that feels good. And stretch out the legs. Pull the deep breaths. So isn't it kind of crazy to think that we can be driving down the road and not see a billboard? Maybe crazy is not the right word because I understand why we don't see them, especially if we're not looking for them. And I'm generally not looking for them because I don't like them, <laughs> but that's a whole nother theme. But I want you to think about what if the billboard had an intention to bring you to the present? Right. So I think some of the reasons we don't see a lot of the signs, literally or non-literally, is there's so much external noise going on. You could argue there's a lot of internal noise going on as well. But imagine you're driving down this highway again. It's just you. Wide, expansive road. And there's a billboard coming up and it's white. And you can tell there's writing on it, but you can't make it out yet but you can see the stark whiteness as though it were a beacon calling for your attention. And as you get closer, you begin to make out the letters that form a sentence. And it says, take a breath now. That's it. And as quickly as you read that, You've already driven past it. But yet, allow yourself to think about that. Take a breath now. Like, what kind of sign is that? Maybe I should do it. And so you pause while you're paying attention to the road. And you take a deep breath in. And it feels amazing. It kind of feels like returning home to something you have forgotten. Right? You can liken that to when you're away from your yoga mat for a long time and you yeah, finally get back on it and you're like, oh my gosh, this is home. Why did it take me so long to get on the mat, right? And so go ahead right now and take that deep breath, indulge in it. Let it go when you want to and how you want to. So isn't it true that sometimes we need to create our own signs to keep us on track? Isn't that what a list is, right? I need to um, empty the dishwasher. Or I need to start a new load of laundry. You could consider that a personal billboard, but if you were to create a billboard that was more about, oh, a life sign perhaps, not a task sign, what would it say? So continue down the road and begin to see the outline of another billboard coming up. Also white, because I want it to really be that beacon that you're driving towards. But this time, you figure out what it says. It's a personal billboard for you. What does it say?
Well, let's speculate for a moment. What if you saw the billboard getting closer and closer, but you couldn't make out the message and you drove past? See, the beauty here is, this is your own internal message. Envision another billboard, because trust me, the universe is going to keep um, handing us these signs until we recognize them. Put up another billboard until, until the timing is right where you're able to make it out. And honestly, you're the only one on the highway. If you need to come to a complete stop, or you need to pull over to read that sign, then don't you suppose that's part of the message? Let's go ahead and plant the feet on the mat. Knees are bent. I've got my elbows pushing into the mat. What I want to do is I want to pick up my hips and slide them a couple inches away from the bolster so I create more of a gap between my sacrum and the edge of the bolster, and then I'll lay back down. And then from here, I'm going to take my left foot, wiggle it to center so that I can hug the right knee in. And now hopefully we've created some space for the low back to sink. If you need to get a little bit further away from the bolster, go ahead. And then let's switch legs. I'm going to set that left foot down. I'm going to scooch my heels in closer to me so that as I lift my head and shoulders, my knees are <laughs> they're closer, they're easier to grab onto. And then you can just free the feet, use them as leverage to gently pull your way back up. You can also tip over onto the floor and push your way up, right? So once we're seated, I want to turn my bolster, make it more of a pillow, and then I'll come back down. I'm gonna wiggle my feet to the width of the mat, let the knees fall together, and my hands are gonna rest on the sacral and solar plexus so I can feel my breath. We're going to separate the knees, wiggle the feet in a little closer now so they're hip distance apart, get that low back down, and then just lift the heels, so helping to push the low back into the earth, the breath stays soft.
All right, huge inhale. As you exhale, set the heels back down. You'll feel the pelvic bone gently tip downward and we create that space under the low back again. And from here, I wanna slide the bolster out from under the head so we can ah, release the head all the way down to the earth. All right, pull the low back down and then let's lift the calves parallel to the earth. Try to keep the knees over the hips, right? It's gonna be easier to pull the knees in, harder to keep them over the hips. You have gotta tighten up the abs and pull the low back down. All right, keep pulling the low back down. Take that right foot and just tap the heel down and bring it back up. So what's gonna be harder is to stretch that leg out to tap the heel down and bring it back up. How do you know it's right for you? I don't want the low back moving, I want it down. So if you need to just drop the heel right where it's at, that's fine. Okay, switch to the left. Keep going. The other thing I wanted to point out about signs is that not all the signs mean the same thing to, to people, right? One sign that I see might mean something different than when you see it. So now suppose you're thinking, well, how is that possible? If I see that blue sign and it says McDonald's and Wendy's, I know what I'm getting off that, right? But across state lines, our signs are not necessarily the same. Like the weirdest thing to me, the weirdest thing I have seen, I didn't want to do it, but I was following the signs, is when we were out in on the East Coast and um, the, all four at an intersection, all four lights turned red so pedestrians could jaywalk from corner to corner, not go across one side and then the other jaywalk across the middle at a diagonal like what so that's a weird sign to me to the people that live out there that's not weird it's going to be weird when they come here and they're like wait a minute i have to cross twice i have to wait for two lights so i just want you to think about the interpretation and right now you're probably i'm getting your interpretation stop talking while you're making me hold my back down and <laughs> do this leg exercise right okay hug the knees in Set the left foot down, stretch that right leg up to the ceiling. Interlace your fingers behind the thigh. Let's just get a good hamstring stretch. Like, have you ever been driving in another state and you see something and you're like, what? I don't know the rules of the road. What am I supposed to do? I find that often in Michigan as well, which isn't that far away, is it? But yet there's their street lights are different. The left turn lane is different. And so I want you to think about the signs that you're seeing. It may be obvious to you what the message is, but can you break it down and decide if there's another aspect of it you're missing or is there another interpretation? All right, let's switch legs. We're gonna release that left leg down. Stretch out both legs, arms overhead. Oh yeah, huge stretch. And then release, bring the arms back down. Ah, soften the muscles. Let the feet fall outwards. Close your eyes. I want you to see that highway again. There are no cars on the highway. It's just you. And I'm kind of leaving this open-ended. You can be in a car. You could be on a bike. You could be walking. You could be skateboarding. Whatever it is you want to be doing, you get to choose. 
because you're the only one there. You are at no risk of anybody coming up behind you. And I want you to see your billboard off in the distance. You know it's yours because it's got that fabulous bright white that is just beckoning you. Come to me. This is the sign that you've been needing from me. This is what you need to know right now. This is how I can help you. And so as you make your way closer to the sign, I want you to pay attention to things like your breath. Does the, does the breath feel short and anticipatory? Or does the breath feel more relaxed? Like, oh, finally, finally. What else is around you? What other things do you see or hear? Remember, you're the only one on the road. So I want you to hear the silence. Of course, if you chose your own car and you have the radio on, that's okay. I'm assuming you're listening to something that you love. I'm not gonna guide you all the way up to the billboard, but what I am gonna tell you is this. When you get close enough to read the message, I want you to stop wherever you're at, take it in, and be open to other interpretations of that message that might not be so obvious. Without overthinking it, just be open to what comes to you. All right, I'll come back and get you in a moment.
Allow your focus to return to your breath. Thank your billboard. And allow the highway to disappear. Bringing movement into your physical body. And allowing the breath to deepen. And go ahead and reach the arms overhead, stretching from the fingers to the toes again. Big inhale. And when you're ready to exhale, let's take the hands to the heart. The light in me bows to the light in you. And when I'm in that place in me and you're in that place in you, then we become one. Namaste. Namaste.